Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we are going to be continuing our discussion on momentum equation and turn it into something a little less complicated so that we can use it to solve engineering problems. And if we look at our equation that we've derived from previous video, we can see that there are a few components of stresses here. As you can see, here we have normal stress in x direction, normal stress in y direction and normal stress in z direction. We also have a few components of shear stress. So this is tau yx, tau zx, tau xy, tau zy, tau xz and tau yz. And for a flow that is away from a boundary, it is quite often that we assume the effect of viscosity is very little. And viscosity is the reason why shear stress exists in fluid. So if we assume that flow away from the wall or away from the boundary has negligible viscous effect, then we can safely say that our shear stress is also equal to zero. So what happens to this equation is that for the flow that is away from the wall, okay? So let me make this clear here. This is the assumption that we must make before we can zero out this shear stress. So flow that is away from boundary. And this type of flow can be assumed to have negligible viscous effect. And when there is no viscous effect, the shear stress is also zero because it is the viscosity that gives fluid a resistance to each other. Therefore, without the viscous effect, the shear stress equal to zero. So this means our shear stress is equal to zero. And if we say that our normal shear stress is negative of pressure, let's see what happens to this equation. So basically, you will end up with rho du over dt equal to minus del P over del X. And then you have rho dV over dt equal to minus del P over del Y. And you also have rho dW over dt equal to minus del P over del Z. And if we assume that a gravitational force exists for each component, we can simply add that force by adding plus rho g in x direction. This is plus rho g in y direction and plus rho g in z direction. So this basically is external force. If you have other forces such as electromagnetic forces, for example, you can also put it in this equation, but we are not going to consider it right now. As you can see now, this equation based on our assumption here, this equation becomes really simplified and it is now possible to use this to solve an engineering problem. And to make this equation easier to remember, let us simplify it further. So this becomes rho d capital V over dt equal to minus del p minus rho g. Now let me differentiate the vector term for you by using bolder lines. So this is actually capital V. Okay, and this is G. And capital V and G means that this term has three components, which is component in X direction, Y direction, and Z direction. And this equation can be expanded to become this three equation. Okay, and we call this Euler equation. We get Euler equation from the assumption that when the flow is away from boundary or away from surfaces, so we can zero out the shear stress and replace the normal stress with negative P. So now, if you notice, we have three equations here. Okay, we have equation number one, equation number two, and equation number three. And we also have another equation that we have derived before, which is the continuity equation. And if I write the continuity equation, in incompressible form. So this is del u over del x plus del v over del y plus del w over del z equal to zero. And this is my fourth equation. With this four equation, we actually have four unknowns, which is u, v, w, and pressure. 
This means that all of these variables now is solvable using this four equation. So with the combination of Euler equation and continuity equation, you can solve the U, V, W, and pressure. Now that is when we assume that the viscous effect is negligible. What happens if viscous effect is not negligible? And for that, we have to make another assumption and this will lead to another equation, which is a very important equation. Let's see how to get that equation. Now, when we are dealing with moving fluids, it is normal to assume that the fluid is Newtonian. I believe you have learned about Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluid in part one of our fluid mechanics course. And basically, Newtonian fluids means that if you plot a graph, with tau or shear stress in y-axis and also du over dy in x-axis, you will get a linear relationship which the slope is your viscosity. And this is what you call a Newtonian fluid. And another important fluid properties that we need to consider or we need to assume in order to derive this equation is called isotropic. So isotropic fluid is a fluid whose properties is independent of direction. Okay, let me write it here. So properties independent of direction. Meaning that if a fluid has a viscosity that is constant in x direction, that viscosity is also constant in y direction and also constant in z direction. So if your flow is Newtonian and it is isotropic, you can say that the normal stress is equal to minus P plus 2 mu du over dx plus lambda del dot V. And similarly, sigma yy equal to minus p plus 2 mu dv over dy plus lambda del dot v. And also sigma zz equal to minus p plus 2 mu dw over dy plus lambda del dot v. And this is for normal stresses. For shear stress, you can also say that tau xy is equal to mu du over dy plus dv over dx. For tau xz, you can say that this is equal to mu du over dz plus dw over dx. And for tau yz, it is equal to mu dv over dz plus dw over dy and lambda here is called the second viscosity coefficient meaning that lambda is actually a coefficient which means that someone else has found a relationship that is logical to simplify this equation and lambda is defined as minus 2 over 3 mu. So the second viscosity coefficient is equal to minus 2 third of the mu. And then to complete this equation, there's a hypothesis called the Stokes hypothesis. Which indicates that minus 1 over 3 of the normal stress in x direction plus the normal stress of y direction plus the normal stress in z direction is equal to pressure. Meaning that the pressure is just the average of the combination of normal stresses in all the direction. Now, I understand that there are quite a lot of equations to take in in order to get to our final equation. Now, I can assure you that the technique to get these intermediary equations are quite complicated and it is well beyond the scope of our subject. So let's go through this equation and get the final equation and see if that makes sense to you. Okay, so with the combination of this equation and this equation and also this equation and if I replace all the shear stress here with this equation
and also if I plug this in into this term, you will end up with something that looks like this. This is rho du over dt equal to minus del p over del x plus rho gx. And if you remember, this is exactly our Euler equation before where we assume that the shear stress is zero. But now the shear stress is not zero, the shear stress is this. Okay, so let's carry on with this equation. So now that shear stress becomes plus mu del square u over del x square plus del square u over del y square plus del square u over del w square plus mu over 3 del over del x del u over del x plus del v over del y plus del w over del z. And of course, this is in x direction. If you notice, this equation is very long and it is very easy to make mistakes. Okay, so watch carefully. Now in y direction, the equation becomes rho dv over dt equal to minus del p over del y plus rho gy plus mu del square v over del x square plus del square v over del y square plus del square v over del w square plus mu over 3 del over del y del u over del x plus del v over del y plus del w over del z. And finally, in z direction, rho dw over dt equal to minus del p over del z plus rho gz plus mu del square w over del x square plus del square w over del y square plus del square w over del z square. I believe we made a mistake here. This has got to be del z square, del z square. Remember I told you before that it is very easy to make mistake. So here's a good example. I just made one. Okay, so be careful in the future. Plus mu over 3 del over del z. This is del u over del x plus del v over del y plus del w over del z. And this is a complete equation that we were looking for. But it is also possible to make one more assumption that could greatly reduce this equation even further, which is this will be incompressible. Okay, when we assume that the flow is incompressible, we know that our continuity equation becomes del dot v equal to zero, meaning that del u over del x plus del v over del y plus del w over del z equal to zero. So the terms here at the end is all zeros. Okay. And you are basically left with this equation. Right, and I'm going to write it again for you, okay? So in x direction, you will end up with rho du over dt equal to minus del p over del x plus rho gx plus mu del square u over del x square plus del square u over del y square plus del square u over del z square. Right, and in y direction, I'll end up with rho dv over dt equal to minus del p over del y plus rho gy plus mu del square v over del x square plus del square v over del y square plus del square v over del z square. And finally, in z direction, you'll end up with rho dw over dt equal to minus del p over del z plus rho gz plus mu 
del square W over del X square plus del square W over del Y square plus del square W over del Z square. And this is actually the equation that we look for when the condition is incompressible. And because this equation includes the shear stress and also the normal stress, this equation becomes very important in solving fluid mechanics problem. And I believe you can see the complexity of this equation. Even though we have similar number of unknown and similar number of equation, most likely the equation will require a computer to solve this. Unless the dimension is reduced to two dimension or one dimension, Probably or most likely we are going to need a computer and the art of solving this equation is called the computational fluid mechanics And for now, let's represent this equation in a simpler form so that you can memorize it easier First of all, this equation is called the Navier-Stokes equation Or simply you can call it momentum equation So to derive momentum equation is a lot more involved than to derive a continuity equation. I believe that Navier finds this equation first and then Stokes improve upon it. And if you remember our assumption before, in order to be able to use this equation, the flow must be first, it must be Newtonian. Okay, the second one, it has to be isotropic. And then it has to be incompressible. And also, perhaps I forgot to mention this before, that this flow has to be homogeneous. Homogeneous means that the property of this fluid is similar at any position. For example, the viscosity at this point is similar with viscosity at this point. Only then you can use this Navier-Stokes equation. Now back to simplifying this equation, in order to be able to memorize this easier, you can also write this equation in this form. So rho d capital V over dt equal to this has to be minus del P plus rho g in vector form plus mu del square V. Okay, let me highlight the vector form for you. So this is the vector, the velocity vector. This is the gravity vector and this is the velocity vector. All right, and I think this is the simplest form of Navier-Stokes equation that you can use as your reference rather than memorizing this very long equation. So unless the question specifically asks you to derive the Navier-Stokes equation, you can always use this equation as reference so you do not have to derive it every time you need to solve a problem. So make sure you try again and again to derive this equation until you can do it even without looking at your notes. If this is the first time you are seeing this equation, then I can imagine your confusion, but after you do it many times, it becomes easier and easier. And if you think that deriving this equation is difficult, think about what Navier and Stokes must have gone through when they discovered this equation. And since Navier and Stokes, this equation have been around for more than 200 years and continue to help us understand better about fluid mechanics. That is all from me for now and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.